I think for governments to be successful, government agencies need to act like leading tech companies, and they need to personalize citizen services. So for example, let's say there's a young woman, her name is Fatma, she's a mother, she's taking some years off and she's currently a housewife. The government wants to tell her about some subsidies related to education. When she looks at her dashboard, these subsidies appear. These subsidies would not appear for a young man who's an entrepreneur and is single. Usually, it's very difficult for citizens to search through the archives of government services and find something that is relevant to them. Not only must we change the way work changes because of AI, but even the work of AI. We must be transparent and have ethical use of artificial intelligence. And I have been urging the government to rethink its role as a new Switzerland for AI, a neutral convener of AI experts, not only from the US, Canada, and Europe, but from China, India, Japan, South Korea. There's incredible work happening in all these countries. They need to meet. They need to communicate. Now, it's easy to talk about artificial intelligence. In one of the world's richest countries, we all are wearing nice suits, sitting in a nice arena. But my story started in Pakistan, and so I care about him. I think his work is also affected. There are millions of marginal farmers in the world that live between $1 to $4 a day. And they're incredibly vulnerable to all kinds of risks, floods, pests, soil, erosion. Nobody tells them when to sow a particular seed. They use age-old methods that they've been using for centuries. Nobody tells them there's a pest infestation, go and put fertilizer right here. But with artificial intelligence, we can do that. We are building a new platform that uses remote sensing satellite imagery and artificial intelligence to actually inform farmers ahead of time if there's a pest infestation in a neighboring village or when they should actually use fertilizer or when they can expect rain. And we will tell them with mobile phones. So it will fundamentally change the way that they actually do their work. And it is using artificial intelligence. And they can't read, so we have to send them voice messages. But it can make a difference. And so my point here is, there are many problems to solve in the world. And if we focus on creative problem solving, for every job that we lose with automation and artificial intelligence, there is opportunity for new jobs.